But according to this stupid repent of your sins crowd, growth is automatic. Growth is just automatic, isn't it? Oh, yeah, you just, you just get saved and you just, oh, I just never said a filthy thing ever again. And I just never craved a cigarette again. And I just never drank any liquor again. And I just never did this and I never did that. And I'm so great and I'm so clean and I'm so wonderful and you're so dirty and you come down to the altar and you bow down at my feet and get saved again because it must not have worked the first time. It's what these liars preach, don't they? Oh, you're struggling with sin? That's not biblical salvation. Come to the altar and be saved a uh, 50th time. It's garbage. Amen. And that lying, phony hypocrite behind that pulpit is just as much of a sinner as anybody else. And he gets up and acts like he's so holy and righteous. And, you know, some of these guys are 100 pounds overweight. That's called gluttony. Yeah. But then they're, oh, I repent. I never drank again. Yeah, you drank Kool-Aid again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I never had to drink a liquor again. Yeah, but you drank Coke after Pepsi, after yeah. Sprite, after Kool-Aid, after ice cream cone, and you gorged and gorged and gorged and gorged and gorged. Yeah. Right. Right. You must not even be saved. <laughs> but you know what? They pick and choose, don't they? And look, I'm, you say, why are you getting on me, Pastor Anderson? I'm overweight. But you know what? I'm not getting on you because you're overweight. Because you know what? You're overweight, but guess what? I have sins too. Now, my sin's not being overweight, but I have other sins. And you have other sins. And we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And there's not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. And there's only one that's good, and that's God. That's right. And so I can't get up and say, hey, if you're still doing this sin and you're still doing that sin, you're not saved. Well, you know what? Then none of us is saved, including that biscuit-eating southern preacher at his camp meeting telling us all how we need to repent of all our sins. Well, you know what? Everybody's got sin. Now, some men's sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment, and some men they follow after. Likewise, also the good works of some are manifest beforehand, and they that are otherwise cannot be hid. So, yeah, some sins are open. You know, some sins are just right out there in the open, right? And other sins are secret sins. But you know what? Every single person in this room is a sinner. And if you say that you have no sin, you're a liar and the truth is not in you. And that goes for me and you and everybody else. And, you know, I heard one of these phony preachers say, you know, yeah, these preachers that are against repent of your sin salvation, it's because they have sin in their life. You got it right. You got it right. You got it right. We have sin in our life. All, every one of us. I, what is he implying? That he doesn't have any sin in his life? Oh, he must be Jesus. He must be the second coming of Christ. And we knew it not. I mean, think about that. Now, look, I'm not saying that we all have major sin in our life. And I'm not saying that it's okay to have major sin in your life. I'm not saying that it's okay to have any sin in your life. I'm saying that the reality is that we are all sinners saved by grace. And we all are striving to grow and, and learn. And, get, and you know what? Sometimes the spirit's willing and the flesh is weak and we give in to sin. And if you say, you say, oh, I can't believe you say that, Pastor, I can't respect you anymore. Well, you know what? I'm just being honest. I just can't respect you anymore. Okay, well, then go down to some holy roller Pentecostal church down the street. They'll tell you that he never sins anymore. <laughs> of course, we all know what his sin is, greed, because he gets in his Jaguar. He gets in his fancy, you know, uh, $100,000 automobile with the, the license plate personalized God's man in his $100,000 car and he's got all the gold chains and he's in a mansion. You know what? He's not sinlessly perfect because we can see his sin exposed as greed. Right. Why doesn't he sell what he has and give it to the poor? Yeah. Have some treasure in heaven. Yeah. Why doesn't he walk around like the prophets of God in a rough garment, not some smooth Armani suit? I'm telling you that everyone is a sinner. And after you get saved, you don't stop being a sinner. You start putting on the new man, and the new man is in conflict with the old man. And you know what? Every day, you got to fight that battle. And every day, you got to make the effort to do what's right. And you keep on doing it and fighting that battle. 
And it's just these holier than thou preachers that lie and act, but you know when you get to know them they're not as perfect as they act like they are are they these preachers that get up and talk about uh, you know if you're living in any kind of sin whatsoever or if you're still even struggling with sin if it's even hard for you not to sin even if you don't sin but it's hard not to should be easy you know what let's 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 follow those guys around for a couple weeks Right? Let's sleep in the same room with them. Let's get up and have breakfast with them. Let's follow them and watch everything that they do for weeks. And you know what? Let's scrutinize them and let's get out the magnifying glass and let's see if these guys are really as perfect as they act like they are and as they think they are. Because I have a suspicion that they're going to spend a lot of times just wasted, doing stupid things, sitting around, wasting time, and doing stupid things, saying stupid things, committing sins. You say, how do you know that? Because they're a human being. And especially since they're a false prophet, they're probably worse than anybody in this whole room. Because the false prophets are, are rotten people. Super rotten people. And so if we could somehow become the invisible man and follow them around and they didn't know we were scrutinizing them, Boy, we'd see all kinds of rotten, horrific things that they're into as they get up and preach all these lies. It's not biblical, friend. We as Christians need to make the effort to walk in the new man.